I want to make sure it's understood. Just because he didn't promise interest rates are going to go down doesn't mean that January 31st, things might change. They have to get more data, okay? So let's just use, for example, if they feel like inflation went up at all in the fourth quarter of January or fourth quarter of this year, 2023, the January 31st meeting that the Fed's going to have, they could raise interest rates or they could keep them stable. I think the most likely scenario is they keep them stable. Now, if they feel, and now here's the interesting part. If they feel that, in, that inflation goes down to 2%, that, that their goal was hit in the fourth quarter of 2023, then I believe they will start lowering interest rates. Probably a tenth of a point at a time. We won't even feel it. So if you're an RV buyer, if you're a boat buyer, if you're a home buyer, you're not even going to feel the interest rate drop. You won't even really even, you'll go, nothing changed. Because they're not going to change things as fast as they raise them. Because here, here's a great example. And this is, this is just, just common sense, okay? Let's say that January 31st, they hit their target goal of 2% inflation okay and they say okay we're going to start lowering rates if they lower rates half a percentage point or one full percentage point in one month inflation's just gonna go nuts because now price gouging is going to start all over again so they're going to lower them slowly to continue to get the price stability down so for example, I really truly believe, this is a prediction of mine, I believe that we hit 2% inflation fourth quarter of 2024. I believe our first interest rate decrease won't be until February of 2025. And I think they'll go from 5.75 as the Fed base rate down to 5.7 or 5.65. I think they're going to slowly trickle the interest rate down, and I think they'll hover right around 2%, 2.5%. I believe that's where the market is heading. And that's just based on information I get from people that I know that are politically collect connected, financially connected to the banks. Guys, it, the only people that benefited from all the sound bites are the people that invested in bank stocks five months ago that all of a sudden everybody goes, I'm going to run and go buy Bank of America. And then it soared the price. And the guys that are like me are like, yeah, keep inflating that stock price. In fact, boom, sell right before Bank of America's stock tanks because they're going to find out these investors that went in and bought a bunch of bank stocks when January 31st rolls around and they find out, wait a minute, they didn't lower rates. They're going to sell off. So listen to the full eight minutes of Jerome Powell's statement from December 31st. You could put it on YouTube. In fact, I'm going to tell you a corporate media center, CNBC Plays the whole thing with no interruptions, all 44 minutes. The first eight minutes are the most important before the words start getting twisted. Okay. Now, where they got it twisted from, so you guys have an understanding, is they got it twisted from a statement he made. And the statement he made verbatim, and you can hear this for your own, is he said that every single Fed member, everybody that's sitting on the, the panel with him, was asked to do an individual assessment of the economy and where it stands, okay? And he says, now while nobody wants to raise interest rates on the panel, they have not taken it off the table. But if they can hit their 2% goal, then he would predict that they will lower interest rates to 4.6 by the end of 2024, 3.6 by the end of 2025, 
and their target, which is 2.9, by 2026. So that's three interest rate decreases over three years. But first, they have to hit their target. They haven't hit their target yet, and they still feel like, as a group, if you listen to the whole conversation, the entire Federal uh, Reserve Chamber, the entire panel, is not ready to say, we're going to guarantee we're going to lower interest rates. And that's because there's too much up and down. Some industries are up in inflation, some are down in inflation, and then it flip-flops. Then that industry, then that industry, it's like a seesaw right now. It's not flattening out like they want it to. Part of that is our grocery prices. Our grocery prices are out of control. Okay? I had a couple of uh, Canadians here uh, on the lot. And they said that we are more expensive in the United States for food than Canada is. And that's saying something because I've been to Canada... And Canada is extremely expensive when you go to the grocery store. But guys, when a gallon of milk is more expensive than a gallon of gas, that tells you we are not there yet. Okay? Now, for some of you, you're going to put your life on hold until interest rates go down. I feel bad for you. Because you're, you're, you're choosing the wrong thing to put on hold. Okay? It doesn't matter if your goal is to live on a boat. It doesn't matter if your goal is to buy a house. <clears throat> it doesn't matter if your goal is to buy an RV and go travel the country. If you're putting your life on hold because of interest rates, you're putting your life on hold for the wrong reason. Okay? Now, here are a lot of interesting things. First of all, there are a lot of folks that talk to me through YouTube and through on my regular channel and through Instagram and tell me, well, I'm not ready to buy because I can barely feed my feed my family. Okay, that's a whole different scenario. That has nothing to do with interest rates. That has to do with the fact that the grocery store is beyond expensive. It's it's stupid money to just go buy bread, milk, and eggs. If you're having a tough time doing that, and keeping your light bill on, and keeping the heat on, you shouldn't even be thinking about an RV unless you're looking to make a lifestyle change. Unless you're like, you know what, I'm going to look at this differently. Maybe my best idea of ownership and get out of renting is to own an RV and live in it. Maybe my bills will go down. There's a lot of people doing that. Okay, there's a good reason to do it. But if still, if you're having a tough time, guys, keeping your phone bill on, an RV doesn't make any sense. Okay, now I made a big change for my family. I moved us into the Cougar Fifth Wheel up in Oregon uh, before it really got nasty. Now, it was most out, mostly out of me chasing my dream job because I had to cut the bills down. But now the bills are right back where they were when I was renting an apartment. So I was, well, it was a condo. So I was renting a, a two-bedroom, two-full-bath condo in Vacaville, California, working at Camping World. Great place to work, by the way. Um, you, a lot of you guys will disagree with me, but I actually enjoyed the experience. Um, you know, I got offered my dream job. I took my dream job. We stayed in Vacaville at the time. Between the rent of the condo, the insurance, everything, it was about $4,000 a month total for our bills. Well, I couldn't live like that later on because there was no money being made. So we moved, moved up to Oregon on a piece of property, my mom's property, with a Keystone Cougar fifth wheel, cut the bills down to like fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars $1,800 a month. Well, now with grocery prices and car insurance prices... It's right back up to $4,000. That's living in an RV, $4,000 in Southern Oregon. And of course, I work in Southern Nevada right now, but I stay in Nevada. I don't even travel back and forth, but yet three times a year to see my kids. So you could just imagine that 
this interest rate lowering will not help us. 